so this video i also recorded earlier but due to some reason why sound was not recorded so i'm recording this video again so this was a question which is asked in gate 2000 uh, uh, which is which was a one mark question as you can see and here they are saying the comparing the time t1 taken for a single instruction for a, a non-pipeline cpu with the t2 taken for a non-pipe uh, okay t1 taken for pipeline cpu and t2 taken for a non-pipeline cpu uh, but identical CPU, we can say that which of the following is true? Option A, B, C, and D. Option A is T1 is less than or equal to T2. Option B, T, T1 is greater than or equal to T2. Option C, T1 is less than T2. And option D, T1 plus T2 is the time taken for one instruction fetch cycle. As you can see, first of all, you need to understand why we started pipelining. What, what was the reason that we started pipelining? So you can consider it with an example. Uh, the reason why we started it because with the help of non pipelining pr processor uh, there are multiple phases where an instruction can be uh, you know divided as uh, you can see uh, so i'm okay so assuming that we want to execute instruction i1 so this instruction i1 is divided into four parts that is instruction fetch instruction decode and execute and write back now when we are using pipelining, we are dividing all these four phases into different stages so that we can execute multiple instructions parallelly. But if you don't have pipelining, then uh, we have to execute these instructions, these phases one by one for a single instruction. After completing all these phases, then only we can execute the next instruction. Okay. Now consider it with an example when we have a pipelined CPU, pipeline processor. So this is representing uh, the stage one. In the diagram yeah so this is representing the stage one which is actually the instruction fetch phase now there will be a register after the stage one and i'm going to tell you how and why we are using this register and after this stage one assuming that the next stage is s2 which is representing the instruction decode and there will be a register after the stage two and then the next stage is representing by s3 which is the execute phase and after this execute phase again we are going to have a register and then assuming that we have the next phase which is the write back and after this write back phase uh, again we are going to have a register and this register is actually acting as a buffer or a storage media why we are using these register and why we, they, are, they are used as a you know, buffer as a storage media you can consider that all these stages they are going to have different in execution time for example the stage s1 may be having a different execution time stage s2 may be having a different time stage s3 may be having a different time and in the, in the same way stage s4 may be having a different time we are assuming that stage s1 is having nine uh, nanosecond that means if you are going to execute an instruction in s1 stage it is going to take you nine nanoseconds and then in stage s2 it is going to take you 11 nanosecond in stage s3 it is going to take 13 nanosecond and the stage s4 it is going to take eight nanoseconds now you can see if there's an instruction which is executing currently in stage s2 right uh, assuming that the instruction can be i1 and uh, so and there's an instruction which may be executing in the stage s1 so let me write it down here so assuming s1 i1 is the instruction which is executing in stage s2 and i2 instruction is executing in stage s1 now you can see this i1 instruction will be executed faster or you can say it is going to finish faster as compared to s2 because i1 instruction is going to take 11 nanosecond and i2 instruction is going to take 9 nanoseconds only and due to this this i2 instruction is going to be finished earlier as compared to the i1 instruction but s2 stage is not available so we have to store this i2 instruction inside the register uh, for maybe two nanosecond right but this register is also going to have some kind of delay and uh, th that is to copy the data so assuming that th that delay is equal to five nanosecond okay now what was the reason why we started pipelining is pipelining because we want to make cpi is equal to one that is cycles per instruction as equal to one so here every stage plus the register of that stage both of them included is uh, called as a stage so i'm saying s1 in stage is including instruction plus fetch plus register r1 in the same way s2 stage in, is including instruction fetch plus register r2 say s3 instruction uh, s3 stage instruction fe fetch plus execute state plus r3 in the same way s4 is right back plus r4 and if let us suppose we want to execute an instruction then first instruction is going to take 13 nanosecond in stage s1 the second instruction is going to take 16 nanosecond in stage s2 third instruction is uh, sorry uh, the same instruction is going to take 16 nanosecond in s2 and then 18 nanosecond in s3 and 
13 nanosecond in S4. So the first instruction, it is going to take 13 plus 16 plus 18 plus 13 nanoseconds to finish. But all the other instructions, if you want to execute any instruction, the, all the n minus one instructions are going to take 18 nanosecond to execute. Okay, so this entire time is going to take if you want to execute n instructions and if the value of n is very large. So you can see it is uh, all the instructions are nearly going to take 18 nanoseconds to execute. But if we don't use the pipelining, right, then we don't need these registers to store the data. That means the instruction I1 is going to execute all the four stages then only instruction I2 is going to come. So I1 instruction is going to take 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 8 nanoseconds to execute and after this only next instruction can be executed. So in total this is going to be um, 41 nanosecond and if you have n instructions so all these n instructions are going to take 41 into n nanoseconds okay but with the help of pipelining these instructions are going to take 13 plus 16 plus 18 plus 31 which is approximately equal to uh, 60 or 60 or 61 and 60 nanoseconds to execute plus all the other n minus 1 instructions are going to take 18 nanoseconds to execute right so if the value of n is very large then pipelining is going to be benefited because that way we are going to save a lot of time but here you can see in this question they are saying that single instruction on a pipeline so this is a keyword single instruction now if we have we have to execute only one instruction then in case of pipelining it is taking 60 nanosecond to execute the first instruction right but in case of non pipelining it, it is going to take 41 nanosecond to execute that instruction so you can say the non pipeline processor is behaving better as compared to the pipeline processor if we have to execute only one instruction okay hence for this question uh, the answer is option number b which is t1 is greater than or equal to t2 okay so that is the answer is uh, for this question and uh, we use pipeline because we want to make cpi is equal to 1 that is cycles per instruction is equal to 1 okay so let us move on to the next question here and this question was asked in year 2000 uh, which is the answer of this question is option number b okay so uh, now we'll take some more examples and we are going to see some architecture of pipeline uh, how this pipelining is implemented as in a hardware level okay so let us stop it